Good morning. Welcome back to Bo's Balls. I'm Brent, and we're going to go over what I feel uh, absolute necessarily necessary tools to have if you're going to have snakes. And because uh, I know that shipping season's coming right up, probably a lot of places will start shipping next month, not February but March. I know we're not in February yet, but we're close close enough to me so anyway bro I'm figuring people start getting snakes in March and in a must you have to have your enclosure set up before you get your snake or any animal get it dialed in I always tell everybody to make sure you start setting it up a week before you plan on getting your animal it could take possibly three to four days to get it dialed in to get it to where it's right for when bringing the animal home. Never bring an animal home and then start getting stuff. That's the worst thing to do. If you want to be a good keeper, don't be one of those keepers. That you go to the pet store and you impulse buy an animal, go home with it, and then you go, oh, now what are we going to do? we got to get an enclosure and we got to get it all set up. Well, it should have already been set up. Plain and simple. But here's a few necessary tools, I think, in my opinion. Number one, a thermos, a heat mat. Now, I like these. You can get them different sizes. I go right for the big one, right from get-go, so that way I don't have to buy a bunch of different size mats as the snake grows up. And, you know, you just use less mat. You know, and you st you use a little more as they get grow, or your enclosures get bigger. But this is a 11 by 17, and I got these right off eBay. Yes, it has a dimmer, and yes, I tell people I do not like. You know, don't re rely on the dimmer to control your heat mat. You need a thermostat. You know, if you got just a single snake, I. I believe I like the ink birds. Um, this is just a single, single snake. It's got does have dual plug, but one is heat for heating and the other plug is for cooling. You're not gonna use that for a snake. You're gonna use just the heating one, you know. And you have a must is you have to have this probe taped on the mat. You know, this is what's going to regulate your mat. And if it's got a, a therm, if it's got a dimmer switch on it, you need to turn that dimmer switch all the way up. And don't worry about it because the thermostat is actually going to regulate the temperature. But these, I do like these style mats, and they're cheap. I think they were like, I don't know, when I bought these, you know, four years ago, I think they were. 12 to 18 dollars you know for this size mat and like i said this is an 11 by 17 you don't need to go this big you can go smaller but as your enclosures get bigger you you're gonna have to you know you're gonna have to get bigger so a must have is a good heat mat and a good thermostat you have to have a good thermostat now for a single snake i recommend these ink birds I do have a couple of these jump starts for backups for when I first, you know, when I was first had snakes, when I first got into it, and I only had a few, I had a few of these jump starts just as backups, just in case, and that's only temporary. I don't like these jump starts. These are an on-off, so it heats up to temperature and then drops, and then heats back up, and it might drop five degrees. You know, so I don't like these jump starts. You know, they're an on-off switch, uh, on-off thermostat. So this has pulse or dimming. So you can have it on pulse. Pulse means that it keeps it at the temperature you want it. It will maintain it at that temperature. The drop, like I said, it will it heats up and then it shuts off and it drops so so many degrees. And then it will raise again. This you can also you can also adjust your drop on this. 
So it, you can have it so it only drops one degree and then it, and then it kicks back on, which is nice about these ink birds. These are a lot more programmable than your jump starts. Your jump starts are just set the temperature and it's an on off. That's why I really don't like those. Those are only for a temporary get yourself out of bad situation for a short period of time. These, if you're gonna have just you know one snake and you wanna you know get into it and not have a bunch of money i think these uh 40 40 45 bucks they also have uh in the same model they have wi-fi where literally while you're away from home you can check your 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 thermostat check your temperatures um you can also set it you can also adjust your you know your temperatures while you're away Honestly, I don't really see anybody needing to do that, you know. Um, these do not have an alarm, you know. The, these won't tell you if there's something wrong. Um, you know, that's why I do like the Vivarium Electronics or the Herbostats. They have an alarm you can set, so if the temperature drops lower than, you know, lower than the temperature that you have it set, or it bit goes higher than the temperature you set an alarm goes off and it beeps and it beeps and it beeps until you come into the room and, and see what's going on but i would say my favorite thermostats you know for for yeah high-end thermostats is your herbostat six and then your vivarium electronics one i have both i have i have herbostats i have two of these uh herbostat sixes and I have a uh, Vivarium Electronics one that came with my uh, incubator. So anyway, so some more stuff. Now that you got your heat mat and you got your thermostat and you got a good heat mat and you got a good thermostat, don't chintz out on your thermostat. You know, I said that these are cheap. These are cheap, good quality. I do like these heat mats. You know but you see I should mention that where this one has a separation here it means that your probe is only gonna regulate one half of this mat it's only gonna regulate the part of the mat that your thermostat is it's supposed to regulate both but I can tell you right now there's a fluctuation this side could be you know five degrees warmer than your thermostat probe side so keep that in mind um some of the probes you know like this is a nice it has a nice big probe so in that case what i normally do is i put it across both and i and i tape it down between the two of them so that way it's reg it is regulating both sides but sometimes like my herbostat six uh sensor isn't nearly as long as this this is almost two inches wide uh two inches long and my other one's only about an inch so and in, my inch one has a hard time regulating this mat it doesn't quite span them both well enough but anyway so all right so now we got good heat mat you got a good thermostat temp gun now this is going to tell you this is how you read your hot spot say my tubs here on top actually you know what i'll just grab one i'll just grab a tub give me just a second i wasn't really prepared for that i know but i do have a tub all right let's just say probes here i put my tub on it now what this temp gun's good for is it's to get that hot spot inside the tub probe goes on underneath the tub on the heat mat and this is just to go and get to get your to find your temperature for your hot spot this gives you surface temperature and i shoot for 88 to 90 degrees here on your hot spot so now this is like a 12 quart tub 
and honestly this is the tub size I I would recommend for uh, Phoenix or her brother this is what I would move them into I would I would only keep them probably in this for maybe a month you know in this size because you don't want to go from the size that they're in to twice the size of this because they'll get freaked out they'll get scared you know and uh, we want to make sure that their move is as, as comfortable as possible so I would go I believe this is a yes it's a 12.7 quart or 12 liter the size tub now when, when I go from that tub I go to this size tub okay and honestly the, this tub is all right, but I prefer the ones that have the locks, the two locks on the side too, because once your snake gets bigger, th there's a definite chance that they could pop. You know what I mean? They could pop this open. You know, so I really recommend the ones that have the latches on on the sides and on the ends. But this is a good size for. Uh, for them and I believe this is a 32 quart so right now they're in um, I think an 8 quart so you're going to be going from an 8 to a 12 7 12 liter to and then after a month of being in this then you can go ahead and swap it over to this size tub and if you're going a different enclosure, that's fine. But try to keep, you know, try to keep your enclosure spaces on ball pythons. They don't like big open spaces. Yes, there are people out there that have, you know, ball pythons that do fine. But overall, for the most part, ball pythons don't like to be in great big wide open spaces. So anyway temp gun is definitely on the list you need a temp gun the, i also got this off ebay i paid i think 25 30 bucks for it you know i mean you are going to have a little bit of money getting into this but once you have everything it, you know there's not a whole lot to buy there's only a few things you're cleaning supplies and stuff like that you you have to upgrade on your on your hides. You know as they grow, you'll have to get bigger hides. But for the most part, your your tools that that you have will will do multiple snakes. Also, you know what I mean. You you have one temp gun. You you got uh, you have enough. You, you don't need any more. But no matter how many snakes you get, you won't need to get two or three temp guns. You know you will have to worry about bats and. And thermostats but but anyway let's get back to this so temp gun heat mat thermostat I also recommend getting these uh, temperature humidity gauges it does temperature and humidity the only downside is it's in Celsius but you can get yourself a Celsius uh, uh, the converter right off offline the big number is the humidity and the little number there the 22.7 that's the Celsius and that's the the ambient temperature now what I like to do we'll pull this out and we'll just use this for an example you know and this size tub you're only going to have it on about let's see I like to use about four inches of heat mat on this size tub that's all you need you don't want any more than that because then you'll start getting the the cool side will get too warm yeah because you don't want you, you they need a warm side and a cooler side but anyway for this thermostat uh, yeah this is a thermostat no thermometer it's a, a hydrometer thermometer I put it in the middle of the tub I always place my probe in the middle of the tub because that gives me what I figure is a good ambient, you know, temperature. And it's also, and then it gives me, you know, humidity. 
I only moisten in the front half where the water bowl is. That's the only place, and you don't want too much. But I like to I like to keep my ball pythons at 75 to 80 percent all the time, all the time. You know, yes, they drop below that, but I like to keep them. My perfect humidity for my ball pythons to me is 75 to 80 percent. I have form, I have phenomenal sheds. Uh, I've never had respiratory infection or or any issues of, of that kind. I have I don't get scale rot because they're not sitting in water. If you got so much water in there that they seem like they're just sitting in water, you're gonna get scale rot. So, but these gauges. Uh, if you're new to keeping snakes and it's just so easy because I take these these stickies and these are velcro and they stick to themselves because obviously I cut a little piece off but I stick one on the back side of my gauge and then I put a little piece on the front and then I stick my gauge right on the front and as you can see I've got some gauges on my other tubs there and I put it right on the front so that way you can look right over and know what the humidity is and be able to tell you're not always gonna have to open that the enclosure or open the tub up and stick your hand in and feel the paper towel you'll be able to see what the humidity is so and like I said I like to keep mine and I like to keep it 70 to 80 percent you know but definitely 75 to 80 if they're in shed no reason to have it any higher than that but a gauge now these are cheap these are also off eBay I think these are six bucks a piece I like these uh, thermal pros these are also on eBay and I believe these are $18 a piece and this gives you humidity and temperature and you can just th stick this right inside their, their tub, too, like so. So you can still see it. Look, you know what I mean? You can stick it right inside there. They're not going to eat that. They're not going to mess with it. You know what I mean? So you can actually just stick that inside the tub. Now, what I do like about these is these are Wi-Fi. So while I'm away from home, I can check temperatures and all that, you know, in my room I use these for my room now because most when I first started at all every snake had one of these gauges and it was just for peace of mind that I knew that they weren't gonna get respiratory infection because I try to do everything perfect so you've got to monitor monitor that stuff in order to have your stuff perfect and keep it perfect you got you're gonna have to you know buy a few things that make it easy for you to keep track of that and this one is Wi-Fi, so when I'm away from home, I can check you out and see what my temperature, what my humidity is. But these are also great for somebody that has, you know, one snake. And you can buy multiple of these. There's an app. You have to download an app, obviously, on your phone. But it don't matter. You can have 30 of these, and that app will hold all 30 uh, of these, and you just name them. So you'll know what sensor is for what room or for what snake, you you can name all of them. But it is nice being able to, you can check your temperatures while you're away from home. And the, like I said, these are a little more money. These are like $6, you know, this one here. And I think this one is, like I said, 18 bucks, I think 15, 18 bucks, something like that. But anyway, those are a necessity to me having gauges in the beginning it just gives you peace of mind that you know exactly what the the temperature the ambient temperature is and and uh what what the ambient temperature is and humidity wise something else you need cleaning a lot of people use f10 i think it is i use this chlorhexidine and most of your vets it's what your vets use to clean their uh um, observation rooms or whatever it is there observation rooms I don't know what you call them the rooms examining rooms there we go but I love this stuff you dilute it to a spray bottle this size it's one tablespoon and then fill the rest with water 
I go a little heavier than that. I go like a tablespoon and a half if I'm mixing in these. You know, it's got a pleasant smell. You know, it's got a pleasant smell. It's nice when after they've gone pee and you get that real heavy ammonia smell. This helps knock it down. <laughs> knock it down. But uh, this is twenty dollars for a gallon. Now, if somebody only has one or two snakes, this is going to last you a year or more. I mean, as it is, this lasts me probably six months with 30, 35, 36 snakes. So that just gives you an idea, you know, for how you don't need to get a gallon of it. But even at a gallon, it's only like $20. Also off eBay, it's 20 bucks a gallon. You know, and like I said, somebody that's only got one snake, geez, that would last like five, probably six years. So you don't need to get a gallon of it. You know, you you got a couple snakes, I'd get, you know, half a gallon, liter, you know, something like that. Because you do dilute it. You you delete it, dilute it. Um, like I said, this is uh, 25 fluid ounces. So 25 flu every 25 fluid ounces, use a... A tablespoon of solution to water mixture. Now I also mix mine up in a gallon. I put like five tablespoons, five tablespoons to a gallon is what I use because, like I said, I do use it a little heavier than they recommend. Now this is another tool that you don't have to have, but I do recommend. You should really get into weighing your snakes. You know. There's nothing going to tell you quicker that something's wrong with your snake than them losing weight, like losing a lot of weight, like, you know, drastically. You know, I'm not talking, like, I'll give an example. My, my normal female that went off food for six months, she was 25, 2600 grams, only lost 200 grams in six months. 200 grams on a 2,500 gram snake is nothing. That's nothing. You know, the, I, I'm just trying to give an example that, you know, if if you got a 26, 3,000 gram snake and it loses two, 200 grams, that's nothing. That's nothing to worry about. But you got a 600 gram snake and it loses 200 grams, there's a problem, you know. And you're not going to necessarily, we don't always see... The, them losing weight you know what I mean they don't just drop weight normally I mean it takes a long time six months for her to lose 200 grams you know what I mean so but they'll lose weight they can lose weight faster than that if there's something wrong so I like to weigh my snakes every time they shed right after they shed I weigh them I write their weights down and I write the date now the date and the weight tells me the last time they shed, but it also tells me what they weighed the last time they shed. So, and I do, I, you know, and even with 36 snakes, I weigh all my snakes right after they shed. You know, I don't care whether they peed or pooped. You do have to take that in consideration the next time you weigh though. If they, if they, you know, oh, they're down 50 grams. You know, and you go, well, they, they ate fine, you know, and they're not off food. It's probably because they shit after the fact that you weighed them, you know. And so a lot of people will wait till after they shit before they weigh them. I, I weigh them right after they shed because I want that last shed date. And that's why I do it. I, it gives me the last shed date so I can go... Because, like, yeah, albinos are hard to tell whether they're in shed or not. You really got to to be able to, you know, pick up on a few things. Like, their eyes get a little different. They don't actually go blue, but they get a different tinge. Uh, you're really only going to see, like, the see it on a pink belly. Or maybe, like, the skin bunches up when they move their head. It's really hard to tell whether al when albinos are, are going into shed. Because their eyes just don't go blue and they don't really get dull. You know what I mean? They still stay pretty bright even in shed. So, but with your albinos, I can look back and go, oh, yes, it's been it's been about three to four weeks since she shed now. And now that they're a couple, two, three years old, 
it's a month, month and a half now that they, when they shed. They don't shed every three weeks like when they're babies. Normally my babies, they shed like every three weeks. You know, boom, 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 boom. And once they get older, it's about a month, month and a half, depending on the snake. But normally it's about a month, month and a half. But those snakes that are hard to, to pick up on, I can go, geez, you know, I can't remember when they last shed. I can go back and I can look and I can see the weight. And then when I shed again, I, I always, I, I tell my wife the weight. She writes it down. Her handwriting's way better than mine. So my wife takes down all the notes and I just tell it. And then she tells me, she goes, oh, he's up 60 grams. Or, oh, he might be down 30 grams. But then if we f figure out that he's down 30 grams, I just go, yeah, he probably shit after we weighed him. It's not a big deal. You know, it's the drastic, you know, it's, you know, like I said, a 600 gram snake drops 200 grams. I'd stop being concerned, you know, but you're not going to see it. really going to see it on a small snake. You know, they don't, not just going to rib right up, you know, and I don't really mean to make light of it because it's not, it's horrible. You know, anything that goes wrong with these snakes. So like I said, I, I try to do everything as close to perfect as I can because I'm going to be the one that's going to be kicking myself in the ass if something happens to any of them. And I'm automatically going to blame myself because obviously it's our fault. We, we're the, we are the keepers of these animals so anything that happens to them you know 90 percent of it's going to be our fault yes there's 10 percent that you know they that that shit happens and they pass away but i still tend to think that it's something that we didn't pick up on or we didn't do right you know so and it's scary says you know sending these snakes away you know, and it's another reason I don't want to breed anymore because I don't, I have a hard time getting ready any of these snakes. I'm so afraid that people aren't going to take care of them and love them because I know 90% of the people out there aren't going to love them like I do. When I say I love my snakes, I absolutely love my snakes and it would tear me up to think that one of any of my snakes that I went and sold has is you know gets in a bad home and I understand situations happen and, and people don't real you know have a crystal ball to know that you know a month down the road you know things are just gonna the rugs gonna get pulled out from underneath them it's still up to you to do your best to get that snake into a good home not just another home, a good home. And I'll tell it, I'll tell you, I've actually gone and turned people away. And it wasn't because I thought they were crappy people. I just didn't get a good feeling about my snakes going, going to them. And it's not about the money, you know? I don't care about the money. Yes, I'd like to make some money because I want to be able to put, you know, buy food and all that with any money that I can make but it's not about making money for that I I want to get snakes in the right homes I want to make people smile you know I want people to get when they get their snakes I want people to have the best best uh, handling sessions you know all that I want them to have good experiences with their snakes like I said, I can't say it enough. People that have good experiences with their snakes are going to take care of that snake more. If the snake starts acting out, not most people are going to be are going to want to distance themselves from it. And you know, and you got to you know, you you got to figure out what the snake wants and needs and keep evolving you know yeah it's really all about the snakes you know i and i know my snakes are happy i don't have any that misbehave you know i really don't so you know i hope this helps somebody you know granted you know i'm a tub guy you know whether it's racks or a tub i, I don't you know racks aren't necessarily the 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 best thing you know, uh, 
glass enclosures are always going to be the best choice for your snake. Some snakes do not do well in that type of enclosure. You know, yes, people force them into it all the time and they just say, oh, that's just normal, you know. But it isn't normal. If your snake is just constantly roaming and running around, you've got to change something up in their enclosure. I'm not saying you gotta throw it in a rack, gotta throw it in a tub. You gotta change your shit up. A roaming ball python is not a happy ball python. I cannot say it enough. A hiding ball python is a happy ball python. People think, oh, it's hiding, so it must be stressed out. No, it's happy. If it's stressed out, it's going to be out running around, constant. Now, yes, they will come out in the evening, and they will move around, but they shouldn't be, like, non-stop, just keep roaming. You know, even on food night, I don't have snakes that just keep roaming, roaming, roaming. They'll move a little bit, they'll, they'll sit still, and then they might move a little more. They're not just constantly going corner to corner in that enclosure. They're not just going back and forth, back and forth. That is a sign of a stressed out snake. You know, and I don't care who disagrees with me. You're full of shit if you think that it's that it's just that snake wants to come out and be handled and held. I know I was one of you. I did. I thought Cleo just wanted to be held. That's why she keeps roaming. And she was roaming from the time we get up to the time we go to bed. Just constantly back and forth and at the front and climbing up the front of her enclosure and all that. And she was not happy. I took her out of that enclosure, put her in a tub, put her in, a tub, put her in my CB70 tub in my rack. And she ate three days after being in it. And she has never refused a meal since in four years. Has never refused a meal since. She went six months without eating in that glass enclosure, a two by four by two that she had been in her whole life since she was a baby. And they said, oh, she eats wonderful. And she had stuck shed when I picked her up. And I, I got her home and she ate after a week of being here at the first time I offered her because, you know, I heard everybody say, you should give them two weeks before you offer them food. And then I started offering food three days after they were here and all my snakes ate after three days of being here. Granted, they all came from racks where they were from and they went into a tub. I had tubs set up. My first snakes, I had five separate tubs set up individual tubs that I built my own rack system, you know, rack out of and, you know, and then I decided I wanted to go more commercial, you know, racks. I like the looks of these better than the, the you know, bare wood rack, you know, that I built because I didn't have the extra time to paint it and then let it sit for two, three weeks, you know, so get all the paint fumes off it and all that, so, but... Anyway, I know, and there's going to be people that hate to hear about how your snake that's Roman is stressed. I don't care. And I don't care that it acts fine when you have it out. I guarantee it when you take it out, it's doing the same thing that it was when, it w when you took it out of that enclosure. It's running. It wants to get away from you. It's trying to get away from you. Be why? Because it is stressed. You know, I know, I went through it firsthand myself, and now I take my snakes out, and they hang out. They don't try to get away from me. They climb up on my shoulder and whatever. You don't see me having to go, oh my God, hand over hand, trying to keep my snakes with me. Why? Because they're not stressed. You know, now Cleo, when I took her out, because I thought, oh, look, she just likes being out. She likes us. And when I take her out, she was just constantly trying to get away from me. And she was doing the same thing in the enclosure that she did once I took her out. Just trying to get away. Trying to get away. You know, so a, a, a non-stressed snake, when you take it out, is going to be perfectly content to just hang out with you. It's, it's going to move around, but it, you're not going to have to keep the snake with you. It's going to just move around amongst you. It's not going to try to get away. 
Now, anybody out here that's still watching this and you've had snakes for any amount of time, say a year or more, put your two cents in here. You know, am I full of shit or did, have you found this to be true? When your snakes are roaming and you think they want to come out and you take them out, they're constantly trying to get away from you too, aren't they? You know, and no, I'm not saying every snake needs to be in a tub or a rat, but there are snakes out there that don't do good in glass or PVC enclosures. That's all. You have to figure out what's best for your snake and go with it. Not what's best for you. Too many people just want to do what's best for them because they think that's what's best for the snake. When you have no idea what's best for that snake. That snake is telling you and you are oblivious to it. Of what that snake really wants and what that snake really needs. Go to David Kaufman ball pythons in the wild you know they live in little tight crammed spaces termite mounds that's where they choose to live they don't want to be in these big old enclosures they're not in and there might be four or five in a tight little space in one one uh termite mound he did it he went in the wild he went and took temperature readings and humidity readings in their enclosures. There was females that were laying on eggs at the time. And so, you know, I mean, that is an awesome video. I really recommend anybody that, that watches me go watch David Kaufman, Ball Pythons in the Wild. And then you can come back and argue with me. You know, <laughs> but it's, it, you know, and yes, this is my opinion. You know, I'm not saying that I'm a genius when it comes to animals, and I'm far from a genius, you know, but I'm really good at reading animals. I've never had any bad experiences with animals. I've never been bit by a dog. I've never been bit by any animals, plain and simple, other than a couple baby snakes that I had when I first got them. But I, I've had all these snakes for three and a half to four years now, and two bites from babies when I first got them four years ago. So, you know, you, you can tell me that I'm full of shit, but the proof is in the pudding. I don't get bit. You guys see me take out every one of my snakes. I don't hone in on, oh, these ones are, are super friendly and, and these ones are a little off. No, when I, when they're shy, I tell you that they're shy and I, and you know, I, I'm up front. I don't lie about shit, you know, I got absolutely no reason to lie. You know, I really only want what's best for these snakes. And lying to people isn't what's best for these snakes. You know, so. But that's my two cents. And these are the tools that I think are a must-have. And a few tools that I think just make life a lot simpler. You know, your, your gauges. You know, to give you, so you can just look and say, yep. That's 78% humidity. You know, that's 70% humidity and 27, that's the Ambien. Whatever 27 Celsius is, I don't really pay attention to that anymore because I did in the very beginning. But I know that now, and I have tubs because these gauges do go bad. You can see this tub doesn't have a gauge. I've had snakes long enough now that I can tell, and I, I, you know, them ones that don't have gauges, I'll put all open up, stick my hand in, and feel for moisture. You know what I mean? So, but anyway, I've rambled on, probably lost some, some subscribers, but you know, I, I, I have nothing to benefit. You know, I got nothing to benefit by lying to anybody. You know. And all I would do is end up hurting, you know, the ball python, you know, in, in boa market. If I sat here and lied and told everybody, snakes don't matter what enclosure you put them in. They do great in all enclosures. They don't. Plain and simple. Some don't like to be out in a uh, well, you know, some place that has got a lot of people. All these snakes were in my living room. 
in my living room where the TV's blaring, the dog's barking and running around, and we're jumping around and thumping around. All my snakes were fine. I only moved them in this room because the wife was sick of having them in the living room. But I miss them in the living room. But anyway. So, with that being said, these are the tools, a few things that I think that everybody ought to have, and a few things that I think that uh, make things easy. And there you go. If you can't be good, be good at it, people. Cheers.